So this is our continuation of part two in optimizing your Helium hotspot to make your money and your investment work hard for you, just as hard as you work to smash and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. No, in all serious, no, seriousness, we're gonna be talking about the rack miner. We're gonna be using it as an example as I build out an outdoor enclosure. I'm gonna walk you through the process, walk you through the specific antenna I purchased, walk you through the outdoor enclosure I'm going to be using, how I'm going to build it instead of buying a $200 one off of uh, other sites that sell them, and then talk about just kind of the coaxial cable you should use and whether you should consider just having a longer coaxial cable uh, and have your miner inside or build out an outdoor enclosure so your coaxial cable running to your antenna out isn't as long as that can hurt your overall signal strength. So we're gonna get into kind of like I said, the technicals within this three-part series. The first one was just kind of briefly going over some of the details, some of the terminology that you're going to have to know. And in this video, we're gonna take some of that and use it. So. I do hope that you do find a little bit of value in this video, and if you do, all I ask in return is you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you've yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button, turn on all notifications so you're notified when I drop a video. And if you do want early and exclusive access to opportunities in the stock market, cryptos, mining cryptos, there'll be a link down below in the description for the private Discord. With that being said, let's jump into the video. You know, I think I need to talk to the folks over there at Parley Labs because <laughs> literally uh, two days after I post saying I'm doing to be doing a video series on how to optimize your helium hotspot and all of the things that go into it, Parley Labs literally just posted yesterday a fantastic blog post and everything that's was going to be <laughs> discussed in my three part video series. So uh, thanks, Parley, for doing this. Um, there's a fantastic link. Uh, I'll provide a link to this. It's a fantastic article if you're interested in really getting into the nitty gritty of how to optimize and beat out your competitors in your local area for your helium mining reward. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is enclosures. Now, this is a, I believe this is a uh, nine by nine by six uh, enclosure. It's about $20 from Lowe's and relatively uh, inexpensive. The one thing that you'll have to have because if you are going to be putting your rack hotspot or your Nebra is you're obviously gonna have at least to drill a hole in the top and drill a hole in the bottom. Uh, one obviously for your coaxial cable to go up through the top to go to your antenna and then one for your power cord uh, to go up in here. So that is obviously gonna be another thing. And then if you are gonna be running ethernet, um, you would have to have another hole for that. At least that's what I would recommend. Uh, so you'd have probably what, two holes in the bottom and then one hole at the top. And you do wanna make sure that they are waterproof. So there are certain types of things that you can purchase on Amazon that allow you pretty much to have some of the, the best you know, waterproofing uh, connectors uh, within the actual device. This is what they look like. They just kind of go together. Uh, nothing super fancy about them, but they are waterproof, super fantastic. I've had experience with these in the past and they work very well. So I'll be kind of doing a, later on I'll be doing a video of me putting this all together and showing you how it works and some of the results I'll be getting. But enclosures are very, very important. The problem is it's kind of a monopoly between Parley Labs and Calchip over enclosures, Parley Labs just sent out an email earlier talking about their Bobcat enclosures that they were coming out with. I think it was Bobcats uh, or maybe it was Nebra enclosures. But realize these enclosures are upwards of about almost $200 if I remember correctly. Uh, and that's quite expensive. Obviously, they have like a whole kit sometimes that comes with it. But if you go and get your own stuff all together, you can get it almost at half the cost. Uh, so the one you can go and get the nine by nine by six box from Lowe's. It's a conduit box. Or I have told, been told by people in my private Discord that this is a very popular one on 
Amazon as well. This is the um, nine by six by three extreme broadband, heavy duty, weatherproof, multi-purpose enclosure, and that's a mouthful. But as you can kind of sell, uh, it it looks like it can fit most hot spots. Like a, like this one is like I said, I'm pretty sure it's a nine by nine. Um, the only concern that I would have with this one is it would be very very tight on the Nebra or the Bobcat. Um, so that would be really the only concern I would have. Um, but for the rack hotspot, such as this one right here, it would be a fantastic fit. And as you can see, it's 1875, uh, much, much cheaper. And it looks like from what I can tell, it already has imports down here. If I move myself over, um, as you can tell, it looks like it already has things down in the bottom pre jolt for you to be able to uh, run some wires into there and then also up top looks like you can uh, run some wires you'd probably have to drill a hole up through the top but this is just kind of an alternative for those of you who want to save some money uh, maybe you spent a lot already on your miners and you're trying to find a way you know cut cost um, and one if you do everything for a cheaper cost your ROI is that much faster so uh, the one thing though is a lot of people are, well once this is in there you know, it's just gonna be laying on the bottom of it, right? And you, and you don't necessarily want the hotspot just to be like that, right? So what I did some research on is I found this on Amazon. So this is called a Wally C-clamp base mounting accessory. I have mine ordered, but pretty much what you can tell is that this has a mounting bracket in the back. So you can pretty much drill this into the back of the device or uh, of this box, right? Um, and you can adjust based on the screw, the depth of the, the hotspot miner. So obviously the rack is a little bit more, uh, as far as depth is concerned, it's a little bit deeper. So you may have to adjust a little bit more, maybe you have a different screw. I'm kind of experimenting with this, but um, this will pretty much allow you to twist and tighten this where it is sitting snugly against the back of the box and you don't have to really worry about um, you know wind or anything like that knocking the miner around. So therefore you can simply have that already attached. You slide the this portion, um, if I can draw over this, um, you would slide this portion right here, goodness, you would slide this portion right here over this portion and then you can adjust the screw right here and screw it tight to make sure it fits towards the back of the device. So that is the plan. I'm gonna be kind of showing you as I go through the process whether it will work or not. But this obviously is gonna save a lot of money and it's just a, you know, ways that you can kind of put things together in order to, you know, do it yourself. And then also you can do it much faster than waiting a week or two to actually get the enclosures in. So that's enclosures moving on to the antenna. Now I'll be doing a whole video specifically regarding antennas, but I just want to briefly talk about the fact that almost everyone in my opinion should at least upgrade their um, basic antennas. For me, it all depends obviously on the location uh, because that is really key. Now, outdoor antennas and indoor antennas, there are slight differences, but they all pretty much have the same consistency. Now, one of the things I feel like most people don't talk about is the fact that you can put 5.8 DBI antennas inside your house. I mean, sure, it's not the most aesthetic thing. Um, sure, you know, your seven-year-old brother may think it's a lightsaber and try to run off with it. But outside of that, uh, I feel like now a lot of people try to put these inside. If they don't have an outdoor one, the, they just resolve to using the stock one. And I don't think that's personally, personally, I don't think that's the best decision. As uh, we will be able to tell using Hotspot RF how much more coverage you can have simply by going from the stock antenna to a 5.8 DPI. It's pretty major. Now, as it was, it's pretty huge. And on Rack's website, they actually have a bundle um, where you can get two of them. These are indoor, uh, these you put 
put these indoor. Um, they state that also in here, said the magnetic base is not suitable for mounting outside. This is for indoor uh, situations. So uh, this is actually quite, uh, and, and in my opinion, I think this is a fantastic deal. You get two antennas that you can put indoor, really not bad. You're getting them pretty much for $50. And uh, both of them for fifty dollars, you got everything that you need right here. So really, not that bad of a deal. Now, if you're wanting a specific one for outdoor, this one offers more of an outdoor mounting. Um, so this is also on Rack's website. Like I said, forty bucks. Really can't beat that price when it comes to getting an antenna and getting all the things you need for it. Now, there's going to be a lot of debate uh, between people who say use this cable, use that cable, uh, different types of cables. And it all sometimes does come to the use basis of your overall uh, connectivity. So the type of cable you use mainly depends on how far your hotspot is from the antenna. If your hotspot is an outdoor enclosure where it's only a foot or two away from the antenna, you'll be fine in using the included pigtail that comes with the antennas which we saw earlier, the type of cable you use matters more when you're doing long runs of coax cable. The general rule of thumb is that under 25 feet, you are okay using M LMR 200 cables. So if your hotspot is less than 25 feet from your antenna, you can use LMR 200, but if anything's over 25 feet, you would want to use LMR 400 because it has lower uh, attenuation over long runs and maybe many people refer to attenuation as DBI loss. See the chart below, and it talks about some details here. Now, you can use the chart that is on here on Parley Labs website. Uh, they do a pretty fantastic job kind of breaking down everything here as far as the length. So if you do 25, 50, 100, 25, 50, 100, as those are typical standard lengths of coaxial cable, um, and it kind of shows you the overall attenuation or the loss of db based on the length of the cable as you can see it is much better for the longer the cable with the lmr 400 as it is with the 200 now the these small individual things and this is specifically in the eu talking about this again is that these small individual things as far as placement the type of you know cable that you use the type uh, if you're going to have an outdoor enclosure you're going to set it inside uh, all of these small little things come together whether it's saving you money getting a faster roi or just getting better coverage all of these things add up and so when, this is an example that was shown so rg-58 cable rf signal insertion loss over 10 meters to 30 feet at eu 868 megahertz frequency is nominally uh, 5.8 dB, that's, but that's only 56.4 efficiency. Now, the LMR 400 loss over 10 meters, so over 30 feet at EU, same frequency, everything, is 1.4 dB, much higher coverage, and 74.8% efficiency. So that is a big deal, right? So what you're going to see is that these small things all play a role. Now, one of the last things I want to really talk about is whether it makes sense to put an outdoor enclosure outside and have a shorter cable or have the outdoor enclosure inside and run the cable all the way out. So a lot of that depends on your situation. If you have somewhere to place and mount it outside, the shorter the cable is, the more strength of your signal will be. So that is typically going to be the best alternative. But if you don't have any alternative, and you don't have maybe any place to mount a enclosure or anything like that outside of your home, then at least be have the ability to run a cable out and maybe even just mount something such as this antenna. You can see if I go to the right side of the camera, uh, how long that is, it's really not that long. Um, and at least be able to mount that. And at the worst case scenario, be able to get like an indoor mount such as the one off of rack where you have a 5.8 dbi antenna maybe inside your house hopefully your third cousin's not using it as you know a lightsaber um but you know this is really all these things really add up and this is how you stay ahead of the rest of the competition and you maximize your earnings and you make your money work its butt off for you because that is the goal of passive 
income. So I hope this video is helpful. I hope it's educational. Hopefully you got a few things out of it. Tomorrow's video, we're going to be talking about indoor placement, um, where you should place it, and also talk about antennas, different antennas. So we're going to talk about placement indoors and antennas in tomorrow's video. So stay tuned for that. If you did find value, smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Yet to subscribe, hit the subscribe button, turn on all notifications. And if you do want early access to opportunity stock market cryptos, mining cryptos, it'll be a link down below in the description for the private Discord. I hope to see you in there. Until next time, guys, stay invested.